excited. I am back and I'm here to give you give you guys a story time. And this is more of a touchy subject for me. This is about how I almost could have died from sickle cell. And um how I how I spent about three weeks, maybe a month in the hospital. And I remember it like it was yesterday because it was my 27th birthday. This happened, what, seven years ago? 2012 is 2019. <laughs> yeah, so seven years ago. And my baby, oh, how old was Juju? Sorry. It was about five, five years old. My baby was about five years old, Julius, my only son. And, you know, I'm going to insert little pictures of me going out and, you know, my family being at the club with me. You know, I had a good time that night. My 27th birthday, I had a good time that night. And, you know, we went out to celebrate it. I remember the exact club. We went to Envy to celebrate my birthday. And I was feeling good that whole day. I was good. And I just know, you know, I turned up. I remember people saying I was tipsy. I was drunk. I had a good time, y'all. So, you know, I come home. It's about maybe 2, 3 o'clock. You know, when the clubs let out, it's like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And went to sleep. I want to say about 5, 6, maybe 7 in the morning. I woke up with bad, 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 bad. When I tell y'all bad chest pain, I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. It felt like my chest was caving in. I was just hurting so bad. And you know, the month of April is springtime around then. It's, a, it's around spring. So I went out. You know, with no coat on or whatever. You know, I had a jacket, but I didn't wear it. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be cute into the club. I, I had a jacket on, but I didn't wear it into the club. I left it in the car, actually. So, anyways, back to me waking up around 5, 6 o'clock in the morning with bad chest pain. I had to go to the emergency room. So, I took myself to the emergency room. I think I drove myself to the emergency room. I don't remember. Some things I do remember. Some things I don't remember because it's... It was like seven years ago, but I was in and out, you know. So I took myself to the emergency room and, you know, they they kept me, whatever, you know, put an IV in me, um, gave me pain meds or whatever. And somehow the pain didn't ease up because I remember them keeping me or whatever. I go into, you know, you know, after the emergency room, I'm in a, I'm in a room, the regular rooms upstairs now. You know, I got admitted because the pain didn't stop. So I got admitted. I'm in the regular rooms. And I remember my nurse. I don't remember her name, but if I was to see her today, I would be like, oh, you took care of me on that day or whatever. And you knew how to react and when to react when you saw my Anyways, we're going to get to get to that story. I just know I could, I don't remember her name. I could just point her out when I see her. If I was ever see her again, I could point her out. So anyway, she took real good care of me that day. You know, them days I was in the hospital, she took very good care of me. And I remember the doctors coming in, telling me it might could be pneumonia. They didn't know what it was because I remember... You know, be in and out, you know what I'm saying, from the meds and from my oxygen dropping and dropping and, you know, then going back up and then dropping. Then I also was coughing up mucus, like yellow mucus. Sometimes it'll be green. So I remember the doctor coming in and was telling me when I do, when I do cough up my mucus, do I remember what color it is? Do I ever spit it out? And I believe I remember telling her. I do spit it out, and I do remember it being like yellowish green. It's mucus, and she tell me every time I was to spit up mucus to let them know. And I was like, okay, I'll let y'all know. Well, I let my nurse know, and then my nurse let the doctors know. 
And I just remember being out of it. It was like, it happened so fast. I just remember my nurse coming in and she was, she came in, looked at my vitals and went back out real fast. And I'm, you know, like in and out of it, like from the meds and I remember her coming back in. I remember a whole bunch of other teams coming in with her and they look at my vitals and they see my oxygen going down. At this point, they don't want to scare me. So they're not talking to me, but they're talking to amongst each other about what's going to happen, what's going to go next, what's going to go down and, you know, so on and so forth. So I remember them taking off my nail polish because I had some nail polish on. And I remember them taking off my nail polish. I don't know why, but I remember them taking off my nail polish. And then I remember them putting me into another bed and then strolling me to the ICU. To the ICU. And at this, I knew what was going on, but I really didn't know what was going on. I just knew that it wasn't good. So I went to the ICU and... I was so scared that nobody know where I was at. Usually when I'm in an emergency room or if I feel like it's just something I'm going to come out of, I won't let my family members know that I'm going to the emergency room. I'm 27. Well, I was 27 years old at the time. And I, I was grown as heck. So I just felt like did nobody, I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't have to tell nobody. I was thought I was going to come out of it like that. Thought it was just a, a pain crisis I was going through and it was going to give me stronger meds and then I was going to be home like within a couple of days. It didn't go that way. So didn't nobody know where I was at. So I think I'm in there for a week and didn't nobody know where I was at. So usually when Tiffany goes missing or not picking up her phone or they don't hear from Tiffany, they know something wrong. I'm either in the emergency room no, I'm either in the hospital and, and I've been a minute. That's why I can't nobody find me. Usually when I'm in the hospital, maybe two or three days, you know what I'm saying? I'm calling somebody or I'm able to answer my phone. This time I wasn't able to answer my phone because I was out of it. Anyways, back to them rolling me to the ICU. Um, I remember them trying to find veins, like my veins in my arm because i know that one iv wasn't enough so they needed another iv i guess to transfer to take out the bad blood and to put in some good blood so i remember some um some colleagues coming in and they were trying to find my iv you know like right right up in here and i remember them study poking i still got like the little dots on my on my arms and I remember them poking me and couldn't find the IV. And they poked me again. They couldn't find I'm like, what's going on? Like, come on now, y'all. Like, come on. I didn't say nothing because I know they was colleagues and they was they was learning how to how to how to get an IV. At this point, the doctor came in and they were like, he was like, You still didn't get there, y'all still didn't get it. And they're like, no. So the doctor came in, one poke, he got it. So they taking out the old blood, putting in the new blood. And I just remember all these lines coming from a machine with, you know, transferring my old blood out, putting in new blood, and I just know all these wires. And at that at that point, my oxygen was still bad because they came in with a mask and they tried to give me oxygen that way. And I don't think the mask was doing good because my oxygen level was still wasn't where they wanted to, to be. So next thing I know, you know, I'm out of it because of the medicine again. Next thing I know, I'm I'm out of it. But I hear I hear people over me and talking. And you know, they 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 in my mouth at this point to see if I got any caps. And I remember the doctor saying, Do you have any caps or whatever? And I'm like, I'm like, no, no caps. You know, I'm talking because I understand them, but I'm out of it. And then next thing I know, they're like, We're gonna put you to sleep and you're gonna wake up. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Whew. So I remember them putting me to sleep. And I remember waking up in the bed. And I couldn't move my arms because they had my arms tied, you know, you know, tied down because when they put <sighs> 
Okay, y'all. I'm sorry. I remember waking up. Couldn't move my arms because I knew, they knew if I was to wake up and see what state I was in that I was going to pull the tubes out of my mouth. <clears throat> so I remember waking up, you know, couldn't move my arms because they were strapped down to the bed, like, you know, to my side. And I remember like gagging, like gagging, like, because I had this tube in my mouth. I had tubes in my mouth coming out of my mouth. And oxygen on my nose. I guess the machine was helping me breathe because I wasn't breathing good. At this point, they told me I had acute chest syndrome, which is come from having sickle cell disease. I had acute chest syndrome. It wasn't pneumonia. It was acute chest syndrome. And so back to me having my arms strapped down and me couldn't move because if they if they knew I was to wake up without my arms strapped down, I'd have been grabbing at the, you know, wires because I was gagging. So the nurse come in. I guess she realized, I guess they realized I got up. I woke up. Thank God. And she like, you can't, you can't move your arms because you got tubes in your mouth. It's helping you breathe. And we don't want you to go and pull, pull it out your mouth. I don't know what was going on. I just know. I was in the ICU with, with, with machines, with cords, and stuff coming in my mouth. And it was it was a rude, rude nurse. My first nurse, when I woke up to, was a rude nurse. She was like, because I was gagging and moving, trying to, she didn't, like, she was just like, you can't, you can't move like that. I'm not going to unstrap you until you calm down. And she wasn't really telling me nothing. And I said, I know. She put some medicine in, sedated me, and I and I just went back to sleep. And then I woke up to a whole different nurse. Now that nurse, I don't remember her, but she was better than the first nurse I had. She was like, "Okay, I see you woke up. You have you know cords coming out your mouth. I mean, tubes coming out your mouth. Your arms are strapped down. Now if I unstrap your arm." You can't go pulling at the, the cord, the tubes in your mouth. Or they're going to have to come and do it all over again. And I'm just, I couldn't talk at this point. I'm just like shaking my head like, okay. So she unstrapped me. And I was just like, you know, I was just nervous. And didn't know what to do. So, um, so I got these tubes in my mouth. Helping me breathe, a machine helping me breathe with oxygen. And I was in there for about two, three weeks, maybe a month, if that. And I just remember the nurse coming in and it was like, you got a family member on the line. Um, And I believe it was my best friend. With my best friend, Lashonda. <laughs> my friend coming in, y'all. Oh, I want to see. It was my best friend, Lashonda. And they told me that. Did they, did they have somebody there by the name of Tiffany Hobson? And of course they did. And they told, they told her everything that was going on. That I had a cute chest syndrome. And I can't talk right now because I got tubes in my mouth. And oxygen helping me breathe. And would I like, you know, to let her know that I'm here. And I'm, I'm like, yeah. You know, shake my head. Couldn't talk. Like, yeah, let her know that I'm here. Maybe she could let the rest of my family members know that I'm here. So, by this point, everybody's up there to see me. 
everybody's up there to see me. And I remember my grandma coming. I remember my cousin coming to theirs. He brought Juju. And he didn't know what was going on. But I didn't want him to see me like that at the time. But he ended up, they ended up bringing him in the room. And I just couldn't talk. And they was just looking at me. And I'm like, why everybody looking at me like this? And, you know, everybody came to see me because they didn't know what was going on. I never been in the hospital that long. I never went in the hospital for that long without letting nobody know. Because I didn't know that this was that was going to happen. I didn't know I was going to get wheeled up to the ICU. And it was going to have tubes coming out of my, my mouth, helping me breathe. And I remember them telling my sisters and brothers, because my older sisters and brothers, they in Atlanta. And I believe they was looking for me as well. They haven't heard from me either. Because they wanted to wish me a happy birthday. But I was nowhere to be found. Didn't nobody know where I was at. And I thank God I came out that situation. Because people die from it, this disease. People lose their life from this disease. And I thank God that I came out that situation. I thank him so much. Maybe he was telling me to sit down somewhere because I was always partying. Every time it was somebody's birthday, I'm partying. And that was his way of telling me, it's time for you to sit down. And I thank him. I thank him all the time that I'm out of that situation, that I came out of that situation. Because that was the most scariest thing. The most scariest thing that happened in my life. Thank you so much. Anyway, so when everybody know, when everybody started finding out that I was in the hospital, they started coming to see me. I remember my other best friend, Tisha, she came up there. And I remember it was funny, some funny times I had, you know, me laughing. Because by me having a tube in my mouth, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink. So, when it was like, maybe a good two weeks after me having the tube in my mouth, the doctor was telling me that they was going to take the tube out and see how I, how I would do without it. And I remember my um, cousin coming up there, Geneva, and, you know, they she sat with me. We laughed and stuff. And I remember. I remember she asked me, was I thirsty? And I'm like, yeah. And I remember she had some apple juice. Because, you know, the nurses asked if they want anything, if they could do, if they could bring them anything. But, you know, my guess is, I think the nurse brings her some apple juice. And she had a straw. <laughs> And she took the straw, you know how you take the straw and you go like this to it and you see how you got some in there. And she took the straw, just about the littlest amount and like gave me a little bit. And when I tell y'all that was the best taste of my life, that apple juice hit my tongue. I was just like, like you saw that she was laughing at me. And my cousin Naja came up there to see me. I couldn't talk to her, but I seen it in her face. She didn't like to see me in that state. 
and that's that's like my damn that's like my damn sister we didn't grow up together we didn't fought we didn't argue and she never liked to see me at my worst especially when i'm having a sickle cell crisis she hated it but yeah and then i'm with my auntie auntie gashi may you rest in peace I remember her coming up there, sitting with me. By this time, she had cancer. You know, her, her husband came and sat with me. And I remember I was choking. You know, because they had, once they have a tube in your mouth, it's like this little line that connect from the, from your throat to the tube. However, it's like this little line that, you know, when they, they go like this and all the, the mucus come up and it sucks through the it was gross but anyway i was choking and i remember my auntie i, mean, I made a status about this too on facebook back then i remember her coming like oh 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 h no where are these goddamn nurses at they need to come in here she in here choking and they came in like oh you need to be suction you need to be suction and they suction, they suction all the mucus out, out of me. And then I remember my auntie, Hobi, and Uncle Johnny coming up there. Was it was it her the one that gave me the notepad? Or was it Auntie Gashi? I don't remember who gave me the notepad, but that's how I was able to, you know what I'm saying, tell people what I wanted and to talk. <laughs> and they handed me, like, something to write with. On a, you know, a piece of paper. And when I wanted something, I wrote it down. And, you know, when I wanted to answer somebody's question, I wrote my answer on paper. And that's how I was able to communicate back with, with some of my visitors. And then, once they seen I was doing better, the, um, the respiratory therapist came in. And was told me that they was going to take the the tubes out of my mouth. And that it wasn't going to be a pleasant feeling. And that I needed to hold my breath once they did it. And I remember that like it was yesterday. When she was getting ready to take that tube out of my mouth. It was just an unpleasant feeling. But anyway, so I ended up taking the tube out of my mouth. I wasn't able to go home that next day. But I was able to come from out the ICU unit and I was able to go back to a regular room. And I remember everybody was waiting for me to come home because my family member in Chicago was having an all-white party or all-white affair. And my, remember my cousin Geneva and Crystal was just praying that I get out of the hospital so I could make it to the all-white affair in Chicago. And I got all the, I'm praying for you. Don't know what's going on, Tiffany. But I'm praying for you, you know, from Facebook. And I'm going to insert them as I'm talking. And when I got out of the hospital, I was so happy. I lost a lot of weight. I was so little. But I ended up gaining that weight back. And after that situation, i never been back in the hospital for a serious situation like that ever again. And I thank God I don't come upon that situation again. Having acute chest syndrome is not fun because it could take your life. It almost took mine. But yeah, I ended up coming out of the hospital. I was able to make it to the all-white affair. <sighs> Thanks for my family members and my friends for praying for me. Because that was a scary situation. And I'm still here to tell my story. And I thank God. Anyways, I'm pretty good out of here. Like, comment, and subscribe.
subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.